If you haven't seen the keyboard version of this, then do check out that video. I'll leave a card up above as well as a, uh, a link in the description down below. But basically, this is the mouse buyer's guide. This is a rough idea of what you should be looking for if you're looking to buy a new or upgrade your current mouse, especially for gaming. Now, a bit of a warning, just to make sure you all definitely know, this video will contain my opinion, especially on the different types of mice, um, the different features that I personally like, and give uh, mostly to give you an idea of uh, the sort of actual gaming experience that you will be having if you, uh, you know, are picking one of these types of mice. And I'm not specifically recommending any of these, you know, specific mice. Um, no one paid me to do this. This is mostly just for you guys because a, you've been asking for it. Uh, b, you said you really like the keyboard version and see because, uh, well, I have all these mice and I thought I would show you them. So uh, first of all, let's get started with the, uh, the main features, especially to do with the sensor. So the sensor is arguably the most important part of the mouse, or at least depending on what type of game you're using. Now these, uh, these mice here are especially designed for FPS type games because they have uh, both optical sensors, generally quite high DPI, I mean the Logitech G900 goes up to I think 12,000 DPI which is pretty insane, um, if not more and so do a few of the other ones as well. So you do really have uh, a very high options here um, and as I said FPS games do seem to love this especially because they have low acceleration for a lot of these where you basically move the mouse very little uh, to move the cursor quite a lot and obviously the acceleration means that you know if you move it fast it doesn't move itself you know more uh, depending on the sort of speed you go so um, yeah it's uh, it's really nice obviously higher DPI does mean that you move the mouse a lot quicker on screen while moving it physically less in the real world um, which means that you can do trick shots and sort of 360 no scopes easier type thing um, but also at the same time you might want a lower DPI if you want to say snipe for example um, which is what stuff like the M65 Pro with the sniper button uh, generally does which is quite cool so um, yeah, it just it very much depends. Obviously, you can get optical and laser sensors, so depending on what you want the uh, mouse to track surface-wise on, um, how high the DPI you want to go is. Uh, I definitely recommend making sure that you know what sort of a what sort of game you want to play and to what's best for that type of category because it does differ just a little bit. So buttons as a kind of general term, um, obviously it includes the left and right mouse click buttons as well as obviously the scroll wheel and other added features too. So for example, the Zowie FK1 just has the left and right mouse click, a scroll wheel, two buttons on the side which you have to assign in game and a single button on the bottom to change the DPI. It's also a softwareless experience, we'll come into that later. Uh, whereas for example, the Corsair Scimitar, that's pretty crazy. It has obviously left and right mouse click and scroll wheel, but it also has 12 buttons on the side, plus I believe the DPI switching buttons on the top. Um, so you have a lot of options here, and this one is definitely more geared towards MMO gamers and stuff that want to have lots of macros and lots of options to do you know lots of things once with a single button press, which is quite nice. Now you obviously have other ones as well with other options that I'll talk about in just a second, including wireless. Um, but at the same time, the general button layout you're looking, generally speaking, for Omron switches as they are the kind of Cherry MX of the mouse world where they're very reliable. Uh, for example, this one claims to have 20 million click Omron switches, um, and obviously many of the others do. And in fact, for example, the Asus Spatha mouse actually has replaceable Omron switches, which is really nice as well, so that if you want a slightly different feedback or even if just one of them breaks, you can very easily switch them out and replace them so that the mouse lasts even longer, which is pretty cool. In terms of added features, wireless is definitely one of the most common uh, added features you can get. Obviously on slightly cheaper mice, the wireless option is often a very big hindrance uh, because of the latency that isn't introduced by you know, the mouse being possibly A, further away and B, you know, just a slower connection than a physical wire. Um, obviously these mice all come wired, but they do have other features like RGB lighting. For example, the Corsair Scimitar, as I said, also has many buttons on the side, which is quite cool. But as I said, these ones are 
are uh, definitely the higher end of gaming mice. Um, they're also relatively expensive. I mean, uh, not the, the highest priced mice in the world, except for maybe the G900. But then again, that's a very kind of professional gaming mouse. Um, but it doesn't necessarily have to compromise. As I said, the G900 is incredibly fast in, uh, in some testing, according to Logitech. Um, it's actually faster than some of the wired mice, uh, which is kind of incredible to think that a wireless signal is actually faster than a physical wired signal. But regardless, it's pretty awesome. It's also very accurate, so if you're looking for a ridiculously high-end mice, then the G900 is pretty awesome. And obviously you do have other options as well, so for example the G700, which is fairly similar to the uh, Logitech MX Master. Um, the, you have a lot of other uh, button options on here as well, so that if you're a kind of uh, both gaming and multimedia use type thing, for example, that this is the one I use myself, it's the one I actually bought myself um, out of all of these, and uh, it's the, the one that I still use at the moment because it's a, a very good for video editing type stuff with lots of uh, buttons on the side, uh, while still not being as sort of crowded as the uh, scimitar, and obviously being wireless makes it a quite nice travel mouse as well. So. That's quite cool, but uh, yeah, that, the, the main added features are stuff like lighting, obviously the software experience as well. As I mentioned earlier, this is a softwareless experience, uh, whereas the rest of them are generally software-led, so that you have to uh, go into, for example, Razer Synapse or the Corsair gaming software um, to uh, you know change some of the features and you know remap the buttons on the side and stuff like that, as well as change the DPI settings. But it does mean, for example, the Logitech gaming software, which is actually a really nice bit of software, um, is very easy to use. And you can remap the DPI settings, you can add extra DPI layers as well, um, and that sort of thing. So it's actually pretty awesome. But uh, yeah, just uh, check which feature you're interested in. If you're going to be sitting a little bit away from your desk, then a wireless mouse might be a great option. But if you're going to sit on a desk and it's uh, you know never going to move, then a wired option might be better for you. Mouse or me are a very interesting category because unlike keyboards where the experience does differ slightly but the overall end result of you know accuracy and that sort of thing doesn't change too massively, mice for me are a very different category. They're very something that uh, if you change the mouse you have, uh, for me anyway, like when I was using Logitech G900, I was like the, the difference in accuracy was incredibly different and I was much more accurate even in wireless mode on the Logitech G900 than I was on uh, you know any other mouse which is kind of incredible. Um, but obviously Obviously it differs very much, especially on game type for me, I am very much, at least when using a mouse and keyboard, an FPS type gamer, stuff like Doom. Uh, whereas, uh, for example, uh, people might want to play LOL and Dota and that sort of thing, where the Corsair Scimitar might come into its own with its many, many macro keys, um, which means that you can obviously have different functions built in, so if you want to press multiple keys at the same time type thing, or cast spells or whatever, um, then it makes it easy. Obviously having the uh, you know, Corsair gaming software, Logitech gaming software, makes it a lot easier to customise things like lighting and macros. So that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you did, feel free to let me know in the comments down below by uh, you know leaving a comment as well as liking and subscribing. If you didn't like it or I didn't mention anything, then feel free to dislike, but let me know what and why in the comments down below so that I can improve for next time because, uh, well, that's what all this is about. It's all of a learning experience. Um, so, uh, yeah, I guess that's that's kind of that, really. Uh, as I said, I'm not an expert in mice or really anything. Um, just not an expert in anything, but uh, regardless, I hope it was still useful for you. Uh, and you enjoyed watching it so uh, yeah feel free to check out the keyboard version of this and as I said there will be an audio slash other devices video um, coming in the near future too so I uh, do stick around for that but on that feel free to as I said check out the keyboard version and uh, subscribe for more awesome videos so yeah oh if you want to pick up any of these I'll leave a link to at the very least some of them in the description down below but it'd be awesome if you use my Amazon affiliate link so that it helps me out and keeps the lights that keep the uh, camera rolling um, on and stuff like that so uh, yeah, that'd be awesome. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next one.